You've been doing your own movies for a couple years. You're ramping up now. I read uh, you're going to spend about $400 million on four movies that are coming out this year, okay. give or take. You can never believe what you read. Before. Sometimes. Um, um, you know, what, what we're really focused on is how do we push the creative boundaries um, and doing shows that uh, bring people together, are exciting, kind of polarize people. Hey, George, do you love this shit? Are you high right now? Do you ever get nervous? <laughs> A little nervous, man. First video pod. So, yeah, this one's a little different. It's a little we're, different. You may notice something different. <laughs> we're in a bunker. I'm with the Unibomb right here. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to How Original Podcast, our first ever video episode. I'm Pat. I'm George. And this is what we fucking look like. Yeah. Do you think we're going to lose every listener? <laughs> this is too <laughs> intimate. It's too invasive. I don't think our listeners are very good at like making and maintaining eye contact so. yes yeah do you think this is gonna throw everyone off like based on how they've been picturing us and like putting maybe putting the face to the to the voice maybe at some point i'll strip a layer down so everybody can see my tattoos but hell yeah yeah <laughs> yeah I, I do wonder how many people are actually going to play the video along with this versus how many people are like no audio only it's a radio play yes um a radio play yeah i don't know man uh i guess we'll see we'll, we'll, I, we'll find I always out like this video. is uncharted territory yeah i always it like really videos. i always like video too. call us call us nathan drake because we're uncharted <laughs> and we're not on the charts <laughs> so last night we went to a theatrical viewing of the killer yes we did awesome movie we'll get to it in a little bit I got to say, truly twisted seeing that signature red N on the big screen. Dude, it was, uh, yeah, it was like uncanny. Um, and they had like a bit of a different animation, yeah. right, for the theater. It was a bespoke uh, N sort of graphic. Yeah. It was, it was cool. It was cool. They had their best people on that one. Yes. <laughs> yes. The, the best brains. <laughs> best best minds. brains for the arts. Best minds for a generation. Yeah. It was. Yeah, uh, that, that was very fun <laughs> to see a, a Netflix original in theaters it was awesome yeah uh well we'll talk more about it yeah. later but uh sneak preview D all it was no chiller all killer yeah real quick i want to pose this question to our audience when you guys go to see a movie do you collect your trash and take it out with you at the end or do you just leave it great question because call me a dickhead i just leave it like in the cup holder i don't yes. like scatter it but i just leave it in the cup holder the cup holder <laughs> the cup holder and as we're getting up and i was just leaving my shit there was a couple kind of sitting kitty corner like behind us and the the girl was chastising the guy like oh i'm not a heathen i'm gonna take my trash out <laughs> in my head i'm like i'm a fucking heathen so would you <laughs> uh would you say she was of the japanese persuasion i think so where it's like the you as a person have the integrity to maintain the community space like you know you've heard the stories of like after Japanese baseball games, like apparently everybody gets super drunk, but will clean up all their things afterwards. Yes, like we'll spend time. Look, we were in fucking Yale Town, not Tokyo. All right, let's calm down. <laughs> if I was in Osaka, if I was in Tokyo, I would have conducted myself completely different. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, I yeah, my I was sitting on my watch the entire movie because <laughs> I had a, a a Casio a gold Casio watch that I like to wear and that went really well with the fit that I had on. Um, but the problem with that watch is I set it on a setting where it beeps <laughs> really really loudly every hour on the hour, <laughs> and uh, I made the mistake of once wearing that watch to a very very quiet Korean drama hmm. in the theater and uh yeah people didn't love it people didn't love it man um so this time i i, I got ahead of it and I, right. I sat on the watch the entire time so i guess my question for you is why are you so unable to get a handle on this watch dude i've i've tried man see i don't know man the barrier to entry with these casio watches is it, I, I don't know how to work it. I, I I truly need a tutorial. There's four buttons and like, right. I, I mean, it truly can't be that complicated, can it? Well, that's the problem. Is Do you think I, it's there's like, a specific sequence of buttons I have to press? It's so like it's, a up, down, left, B, right. unlock the jetpack type that's, thing. That's right. And if I press the wrong sequence of buttons, I'm gonna no clip through walls. Did I, the lights just accident. flash in here? Did they? Am I, I crazy? I didn't notice. 
my lights were flickering a bit last night actually really is yeah stormy daniels out here yeah that am i is this haunted <laughs> Are we are we in an A24 horror movie? Dude, (laughs) the monster, the podcast monster was unprocessed grief. (laughs) I know I've said that at least five times on this podcast. Hate when the monster in a horror movie is like grief that the characters haven't processed. Yes. Yeah. So whack for sure. (laughs) Just show me some crazy shit. Dude, I was a bit of a monster in the sauna the other day. Yeah, you've been clocking in at the sauna factory. I sure have. So you're making Andrew Huberman proud. So every Thursday I go and uh just just like get my heat shock proteins yeah on you gotta shock them <laughs> gotta shock them. shock and awe <laughs> uh so yeah every thursday i'll go to the loony swim at uh at the local community center and can i guess what the loony swim is please it's a day where it's cheaper than usual to go swim you got it man you it's not it. literally a loony though it's not just for us us loonies right <laughs> yeah it's only the craziest rec center <laughs> <laughs> the, the wildest guai are allowed to swim <laughs> although you know what actually it is a double entendre it is in fact a, a loony swim whoa and uh there's there's quite a few loonies <laughs> that come out wait so it's up. literally one dollar <laughs> it's literally one dollar whoa holy shit yeah no tax wow yeah even like dollar stores now don't faithfully keep it to a dollar. I know, dude. Rec Whoa. centers are holding it down. They are the last bastion of like, I don't know, uh, of society, Folks, basically. Use your rec centers, use your libraries. Yes. All um, these are great resources. Yeah. And Burnaby, rec, like all, basically all Burnaby facilities, like don't charge parking either. Um, nice. Yeah, dude. It's it's literally the the last bastion of yeah of a civilized society <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah so i've been going to the sauna here's my l- let me uh let me tell you about my toxic sauna trait right right uh so my toxic sauna trait that i have is i am obsessed whenever i go into the sauna i have to outlast every single person in oh that sauna. so you need to like prove your your masculinity that's right yeah because like i'm coming in Obviously, they've been in there for an indeterminate amount of right. time. Um, but I have to outlast every mm. single person that has preceded me. I have to kill my my fathers, you know, let, my let, my my forefathers. Let me ask you this. Has it ever come down to a situation where it's like you and one other person and then you maybe get a sense that they're also trying to play this game? Yes. And it's like this unspoken contest of the wills. Yes. Or it, maybe there's like light friendly banter but you're both trying to outlast each other and it's like the subtext that your nemesis nemeses yes <laughs> well i could tell this one guy was he was real real alpha in there mm. um and i could tell that he was flirting with literally every single girl that walked in oh i didn't think that was going to end with flirting with every girl <laughs> <laughs> yes in even i guess like, it's a, not a steam room right it's a song it's a song okay yeah, so there's visibility yes exactly because i've heard exactly. stuff gets very uh yeah it's a gray area <laughs> the steam room there yeah. so the place i go to there's a steam room and a sauna right okay. beside each other right so i've been doing a little bit of both okay um, i do prefer a dry sauna for sure um but this yeah this guy he was flirting with like this 70 year old lady once whoa how old's this guy he's maybe i think he he said he's in his 40s actually i used to see this guy a lot um in the at the bonzer uh, community center weight room uh, okay. when I was a, a young gun. Huh. Yeah. So this guy's been a like almost a silent presence in your life yes. or like a peripheral character. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a constant. <laughs> the one constant in my life. Has it's been like, this you know, guy. when you watch a sitcom like Frasier, you notice the same background extras in the coffee shop for like 10 years. He's a background extra. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Sorry, go on. I'm, the, I'm derailing you. Whoever the the server was at that coffee shop, Gunderson or whatever, or Gunther. Gunther. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> the ball dude. Yeah. Yeah, dude. That's in France, right? Yes. Yeah. R.I.P. Matt Perry. R.I.P. Do you hear how that guy got beat up by Justin Trudeau in high school? <laughs> Wait, I thought he beat up Justin Trudeau. Sorry, he, he beat up yeah. Justin Trudeau. Yes, yes. I was gonna say, whoa, this is a new spin on the narrative. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. He, yeah, he, he beat up. <laughs> My only regret is that he didn't beat him up more. <laughs> That's right. Clearly, he didn't beat him up enough. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wait. So this guy's trying to riz up everyone. Like yes. Anything that moves. Anything basically. That moves. Yeah. Anything like that. that moves. Um. But so he was trying to outlast me one time, and uh, <laughs> you know what? He got me, and I didn't feel bad about it because he came in after me. Mm, yeah. Okay. Um. So you know, it's, it's fine. So that's how you justify that to yourself. Yes. You're like, well. 
you know, it makes sense. Yes, yes. And I had been in there a decent amount of time before he walked in. Of course, he had no way of knowing how long I'd been in there. Um, but uh, so, yeah, he outlasted me, but I think I won in the end. Right. Okay. I think I came out on top. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's one toxic trait. Do you have other traits? Uh, my second toxic sauna trait is not wearing any flip flops in the pool. Um, and wait uh, in the pool, or just like going like no flip flops at all. Oh, so you're moving from like the pool to the sauna into the change room, like yeah, bare, bare dogs, feet. bare feet. I'm going to piss in the urinal, bare feet. <laughs> just, it's so gross. Yeah, it's don't do so that, man. Gross, man. Yeah, what? <laughs> there's no possible advantage to that. <laughs> no, no, stop doing that. I got figure it. out your watch, get flip flops. <laughs> This is my toxic trait, man. Yeah, well, you kept your shoes on right now, I thankfully. Did. So I did. I did. We're both wearing shoes. I took them off when I went to piss earlier. Though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you let them outside. <laughs> In the Japan, yeah. Japanese style. <laughs> it's a polite thing to do. Damn, dude. But, okay, let me tell you about this one encounter I had. Sauna encounter. Close sauna encounter <laughs> uh so i came in dude saunas are such a vibe it's a whole community in there yeah. like i'm trying to penetrate that community like i'm trying to make some, some sauna friends uh doesn't matter if they're 70 yeah dude like i haven't been approached yet mm. to for you know in, you come, haven't come. been initiated into the heat shock <laughs> illuminati <laughs> <laughs> yeah not yet but i'm working up to it i <laughs> So I was sitting, okay, so I, I'm sitting on the bench. Um, there's a guy seated to the left of me, and he's talking to another dude. He's talking about how he just moved from Toronto. He's trying to get his, uh, get a break into the haircut market. So mm. he wants to start a haircut business. And he's telling this guy how he's going to do it. And uh, so, you know, the, the sort of the tricks of the trade. And so he's going to get his business by coming up to people, just random people on mm. the street um, or like that he sees around, you know, <laughs> out here in the wild and just go like, hey, man, where'd you get that haircut? And, uh, you know, they'll tell him and then he'll go, how much was it? And then they'll tell him and then he'll go, I could do that, but for cheaper. So his goal is just undercut every existing haircut place. Correct. Undercut, <laughs> double entendre. Correct. Huh. And okay. And so I, I, another a dude comes into the sauna at this point. Yeah. And sits on the other side of me, right? To the right of me. And the dude tries his strat. And how live does it go? In front of me. Um, he literally goes like, hey, man, where'd you get that haircut? Uh, and he's like, he's just trying to riz him up. Like, yeah, man, I could do that shit. Uh, how does it go? I don't think he ends up getting his business. Right. I don't think the guy was fully convinced. Right. But my question was like, why don't you try to riz me up? What's wrong with me? Right. Yeah. You have hair and it yeah. needs to be cut sometimes. Yeah. Why not try That's to riz me up? That's a good question, actually. I mean, maybe it's because I was sitting there and listening the whole time. So I got too much of a peek behind the curtain. <laughs> but it... I feel like there's no reason to not then approach you. I know. Also. I know. So huh. I kind of felt, I don't know. Do you think it's playing hard to get? Because now you're thinking about it. You're like, why doesn't this guy want to cut my hair? Dude, maybe what that was. A... Am I not good enough for him? That's right. Maybe that was a next level strap, right? <laughs> he wants to make me come to him. Yeah, this guy's reading the 48 Laws of Power. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know about that strat. I mean, just going up to people. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, look. that's a tough way to market. Just that kind of like face to face word of mouth. Guerrilla like, marketing. Yeah. <laughs> and also like, you know, it's been many years since I was loyal to any barber. Like I just buzz my own head. But usually people have some sort of loyalty. Like people are often not looking for a new barber. Like once you yes. find somebody who does the stuff you like, presumably at a price point you like, you tend to just stay with them. Yes, it's not usually a financial. The the financial angle is not usually the right the barrier for most people. I mean, most haircuts are like, you know, 20 bucks. Well, I was going to say for male haircuts, it's often I would say more standardized, yeah. kind of less variability in price. Whereas, you know, yeah, ladies be box dyeing their hair and then yeah. like, oh, no, I ruined everything. And then their hairdresser has to reprimand them. Yes. <laughs> that's Dude, true. that's so funny. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Whereas guys, you kind of lock in with a barber and you're like, this is my guy. I'll keep coming. I'll keep coming until I die or he dies. (laughs) (laughs) You imprint on them. Yeah. um, As they say in Twilight. Dude, I was just thinking, you know, the incredibly old man we got our haircut from in Italy. Do you think that guy's still alive? I still think about that guy. I bet he is still alive. I hope he's he's because that was 2016 and he must have been 80 plus. Yeah, man. He was very old. I hope he's still out here giving low key the the goatest. And that was so funny because we were like learning all these phrases to describe what we were after. Yes. And I feel like it didn't even have to be spoken. It was just like gestures. Yes. And he was like, shut the fuck up and just uh, just sit down. I'll yeah, I got you. Right. Yeah, that was so fire. That was so good, man. Yeah. I mean, I still had like a bit of hair at that point. So I was still getting haircuts. Um, yes. Yeah, that rocked. Yes. <laughs> yes. Shouts out to him. Do you think he's a listener? He, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I think we I think do have he, some. I think he puts it on blast <laughs> while he's cutting hair. <laughs> and people don't understand it. They just like the intonation. <laughs> yes. um, That's he... how he learned English. But if someone was <laughs> learning English by listening to this podcast, <laughs> I would say that's a very bad idea and uh, yeah. psychosexual yes. and thematic are not words <laughs> that often come up in spoken English. <laughs> yeah, I like to think that guy is still alive. I think, yes, I do like to think that too. That makes me sleep at night. I like to it think sometimes that like all these various people I've met like one off times over the years somehow know about the podcast and they listen. Right. <laughs> Boris from uh, Boris Photography. <laughs> yeah. in, in from Cro- Boris Photo in Croatia. In Kula, Croatia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With the uh, the old guy who speaks no English and blasts cigarettes indoors as he develops photos. <laughs> Blasting cigs in a dark room would be so sinister. <laughs> that's that's got to be one of the best cigarettes you can have. That's one of the most like forbidden cigarettes. A dark room ciggy. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's a very uncommon cigarette because I feel like a lot of people who are even like lifetime two pack a day smokers are never going to smoke a cigarette in a dark room. That's like a yeah. rare occurrence. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> um, my last sauna thing I wanted to tell you about was just it's so funny listening to people talk sauna science in the sauna. <laughs> oh God. Like the Joe Roganification of society, dude. It's hilarious hearing about like uh, I can tell you. I've been to the sauna maybe like I don't know <laughs> six times in the last like couple months, um, five times, six times. I've heard the the old adage of like, well, you know, heat rises, so mm. like if you sit up there, it's going to be hotter. S- countless times, people love to tell you that heat <laughs> rises in the sauna. <laughs> so okay, a sauna thing I've never quite understood. And I feel like I was looking this up years ago. Couldn't really find a consensus. It's better to do sauna after your workout, right? Or do some people do it in advance of a workout, like a quick sauna to like get the blood flowing? Ah, that's a good... Or does it even matter? That's a good question. Because I... I mean, I was told as a kid, like, oh, you should eat protein within an hour of exercise. And it's like, that's that has yes. no basis. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, you should be having protein frequently, but it yes. doesn't have to be within that window. It's not like you wasted the workout otherwise. Yes. So. Yeah, I don't know. What, what does Huberman say about this? Yeah, we need to consult. Yeah. Um, Where was Huberman? <laughs> Where were the Hubermans at? <laughs> How many... Have you listened to any full episodes of Andrew Huberman's podcast? No, I've listened to some clips. Mm. Have you heard the one about booze? Yeah, it's I think... pretty illuminating. Yeah, I think I listened. Yeah, I'm glad I'm sober. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's not... Yeah, I'm sure it would hit me different if I was still drinking. Yeah, but, yeah man. But no, man, it's been nice. Opens up your pores, gets nice. your body limber. Yeah, gets the blood going. Um, yeah, it's been awesome, man, having a schwitz. Yeah, I. Um, so the first building I lived in in Victoria when you came to visit me, I don't know if I showed you, but that building has a sauna. Oh, no, I don't think you showed me. Yeah, because it used to be an old hotel that was then converted for rental use. Okay. Um, so yeah, obviously, the sauna was like from the hotel stage, but they just kept it. Right. Which is awesome. That's sick. Yeah, that's my dream, dude, to live in a building with a with sauna. Man. Yeah, that, oh, man. I kind of miss that building. Yeah, man. Because my, my current building, I mean, I like it, but it doesn't have a sauna. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What if we recorded in a sauna? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's like more plates, more dates, his early videos. Nobody could figure out, like, wait, is this a basement? Is that like a sauna panel? Like, where are these being recorded? Oh, shit. Okay. I think it was just like a Vancouver special type house with like right. wood paneling in the basement. Yeah. Oh, okay. But I think he's made a significant amount of money since those days. So. Right. Right. 
he he got out of the hood. Yeah. He got his mom out. And of the hood. I I do like to imagine that maybe our fans are trying to figure out where the fuck are these guys. Yeah. We're in the Black Lodge right now. <laughs> <laughs> We're outside of time and space. The Gray Lodge. I've always been here. Yeah. Yeah, this is good though. I think the audio is going to come out real nice. I think so, man. And I the... do apologize to anyone who was a little Maybe if any of you guys were bothered by the audio during a few points of last episode, I think that was my mic cable getting caught between couch cushions. Yeah, dude. Uh, you better watch yourself. I know. I, I will do my best to make sure that kind of thing does not happen again. Good. Also, do you feel the temptation to keep looking directly into the camera? I kind of did. I, I just did it one time, yeah. and now I just want to keep gym, gymming it into the, yeah. directly barreling into the camera. Oh, that would be a fun bit. Like if you're telling me crazy stuff about the sauna, and just... I just go... <laughs> Do you notice on some episodes of Seinfeld, Jerry does almost a proto gym face, but he doesn't do it like directly into the camera. Yes, he's sort of but somebody kilter, will yeah. say something and then he's like, yes, while, <laughs> while the laugh track is rolling. Yes, yes. It's a good reaction. The desk guy that we talked to just briefly looked in here, <laughs> checked oh, in no. on us. <laughs> What do you think he makes of what he just saw? I think he, I think, <laughs> I think this is exactly what he thought was going to happen in here. Yeah. He's like, oh yeah. Yep. Well, we're also looking <laughs> at, tracks. we're also looking at a sign that says we cannot accommodate acoustic drums, bass instruments, and guitar amps. Damn. Man. So I was going to just my do some for nothing. shredding at the end. Yeah. I brought my djembe drum for nothing. <laughs> it's fine. It's okay. We'll do a drum circle at my place afterwards. We also can't vape in here. Oh, no, yeah, they have a smoke detector. That's probably good. No, uh, it's no coffee. Good. Yeah, it's a good thing they got smoke detector because we got some fire in the booth tonight. <laughs> yeah, man. Should we get into it? Let's go. The Killer, 2023, directed by David Fincher. Uh, Darwin's Finchers. It's so much, of... so much fucking better than Mank. Mank sucked. Mank stank. I didn't watch Mank. You don't need to. Because I feel like I did have high hopes for Mank, yeah. hearing the premise. And I think it was Fincher's father who wrote the script and then uh -huh. had died like decades earlier. Oh, so there's so, the war. There's a it was kind of that sentimentality. Yeah. Well, he doesn't it was do, just he doesn't do good with period pieces. Well, Benjamin Button was his Zodiac other Zodiac is L. so good though. Zodiac, because yeah. I was thinking like, wait, it was a period piece, but then it's like Zodiac. I would argue is probably his best. You're right. I, I mean, yeah, Zodiac is, I guess, technically a but period Mank, piece, but it still doesn't feel too far removed from the modern day. Mank was just a snooze fest, and I think it is very hard to show the creative process for writing, right, in a way that is satisfying for an audience. Yeah, it's often like being creative is often not very visual, right? right. <laughs> so, for sure, for sure. All. Um, oh. Yeah, I <laughs> makes just in a sauna to get ideas. <laughs> <laughs> He's staying longer than anybody thinks possible in a sauna. I get my best ideas in the sauna, that's for sure. Um, I feel like a lot of bodybuilders end up dying in saunas or really? sauna adjacent stuff. Really? Yeah. Like so a, like a you... final destination type death. Well, I was going to say famously, the uh, bodybuilder Ziz died in a sauna in oh, Thailand. Shit. So if you end up doing a lot of steroids and stimulant drugs, please don't do the sauna anymore. God damn. You yeah. kind of have to pick a lane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although I guess with him, and I do wonder how many of our listeners know about Ziz. I would say probably a lot, actually. We have some pretty pretty poorly socialized listeners um the rumor with him is that it was like this congenital heart defect that he didn't know he had that was somehow triggered by the sauna but it's like no it was definitely steroids and drugs okay, i would okay. say that would trigger that a lot more than sauna was this pre-vax or uh, post? oh this was like 2010 2011 okay because he not to go too much into the ziz lore uh, but he kind of pioneered the social media era of bodybuilding mm. and kind of like the over the top humor and like the personality um, and kind of like the aesthetic of that era. Is this head riz? I would say so. All right. Yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll show you some videos. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's pretty great stuff. You Shit. Myron. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, what a way to go, man. Yeah. To just like. Yeah, man, in a sauna, in a fucking sauna. Being internet famous and then dying at like 23 is crazy. In a pool of your fucking sweat. Yeah. God damn. Yeesh. <laughs> well, speaking of brutal deaths. Yeah. The killer. The killer. So adapted from a French graphic novel that oh, okay. I'm going to go on a limb and say that probably 
very few people seen the movie have actually read. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't think it's a super famous book or anything. Right. right. I, I think didn't know it was an adaptation. Yeah. Um, interesting. I, I like... would say Fincher probably. So, okay. I mean, he does a lot of adaptations. He does. He does. Mostly adaptations, right? Or at least he never writes his own scripts, I don't think, right? He He's he's pretty much uh, just a, a director's director, right? Right. He usually just... Yeah, because I guess Zodiac is on based that. on source material. I think I it's believe. on a... I believe it's on some book, right? Yeah. Um, and then Fight Club, of course, is adapted from good old Chuck. Benjamin Button um, is based on a book, I think, <laughs> Benjamin or a Button short story. Sucks. It fucking... I'm going to go on record. I wish... Yeah, I wish Ben. Why did Benjamin need to button? Yes, <laughs> it's just unneeded. Knock it off. More like Benjamin off button. Yeah, <laughs> should have pushed the off button. Um, okay. So, where should we start with the killer? Uh, should we give a little bit of general? So, I this is a bit of a return to. Uh, so Fincher, obviously, his most famous movie, I, I think, is Fight Club. Yes. Um, famous, you know, one of the most famous uses, I think, of VO in a movie. Yes. Um, which is sort of necessary for that movie. I think he, I think I read that he tried a cut of it without VO and it just yeah. didn't work at all because the Chuck Palahniuk book is the the protagonist in that book has such a strong, distinct voice that very distinct losing that voice would have been very like just the movie wouldn't have worked I think, yeah without that voice yeah and it's i was going to say so i was mentioning to you that you know some screenwriting gurus say like oh you should try to write without voiceover it can often be lazy or a crutch but exactly yeah. i think when it's done well like it's very hard to imagine a cut of fight club without any voiceover it's like what the fuck would that even look like <laughs> totally like <laughs> like i think um i think there was an era of film where voiceovers were quite uh, mm -hmm. used quite a lot like i don't know i'm thinking of those like old film noirs you know yeah uh with the the detective's voiceover you know it's totally get a glimpse of what's going on in his psyche but i think more recently generally films have veered away from voiceover to a yeah. more kind of uh gritty realism but i mean as with any writing device if you write something good enough it'll work exactly exactly <laughs> And it definitely works in this movie. So, yes. so it's almost a return to this example of classic Fincher piece of filmmaking, which is Fight Club. Um, so it's a very, very kind of prominent use of voiceover in The Killer. Yeah, I was thinking a lot about the voiceover last night when I went home and this morning before I met up with you. Like, yeah, what would this movie look like without voiceover? Yeah. There's so much voiceover and fassbender is kind of saying these mantras to himself like his uh samurai code you know the the archetype of like a very principled methodical assassin yes but then it's like kind of becoming more and more unglued throughout the movie and it's like you could just not do any of this yeah like, you're compelled to stay in the game and do all this so it's like as fassbender is saying a lot of this voiceover it's like wait, he's kind of lying to himself or he's not following his code as strictly as he should be, perhaps. And last night after the movie, we were talking about the idea of the unreliable narrator. Um, and so I think at a certain point, it does become this almost irony uh, where the VO stops matching like yeah. what he's doing. Um, and you pick up on that. And sometimes it's intentional and even used for humor yeah. in the movie, right? Um, and sometimes it's more sort of thematic and you you read into it and you go like, wait, something's not aligning. <laughs> and uh, that sort of clues you in as to, um, yeah, the fact that this character is maybe not, uh, yeah, not, not, not doing as he is saying, he's not, um, what's the, what's the phrase? Um, uh, anyway, yeah. He, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I also saw a video snippet of Fincher saying like, you know, as an audience, we're usually, believing that whatever a character says in voiceover is true right in a movie but why would that be the case i mean plenty of people lie to themselves day to day like we all tell ourselves a certain story right. but it's often incongruous with what we're actually doing right so yeah i did like that because you know the killer who was never given an actual name a recurring bit is that he always gives like a new passport and new id everywhere he goes yes we never find loved out his... how many ids he had yes dude i'm upset there's a I guy want... 
in our audience that really this is, loved it. This is a satire podcast. I would love to have a fake ID. Oh my god, <laughs> like a fake passport and shit. That'd be so good. I basically have. I'm basically <laughs> fast bender because yeah, I have dude. like four different cards Holy with like shit. four different names on there. Yeah, your name is spelled differently on your license, <laughs> on your bank card. My other bank card and my Costco and, card. <laughs> so the Costco card is the least important part there. But but you said your passport and license match up. They align, yeah. So that's that's important. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, but I was telling George, if you ever try to go to Vietnam, they're going to have a field day with you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, let's take a quick break. Yeah, let's cut to break and we'll be right back. Dude, I walked out with my sunglasses still on and people, <laughs> a few people looked at me. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd be yeah. curious what's going on too. <laughs> and then the guy next to us closed his door. Um, probably fair. Probably a good thing. More than fair for the best. <laughs> okay. All right. So I was going to say, do you know what Michael Fassbender has been up to the past few years? Uh, just like swinging his big hog around and... <laughs> I, I was going to say famous uh, confirmed big hog haver for yes. those of you who have watched Shame. Great movie. No shame in his hog. One dude. of my faves. He's a race car driver. Really? He loves racing cars. So, so Michael, like, he's Michael Fastbender. He is. <laughs> or Michael Assbender if Whoa. you watch Shame. Yeah, yeah. I had that one pre-written. <laughs> I knew I was going <laughs> to drop that at some point today. <laughs> yeah. That, so... that was pretty Michael Crassbender of you. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Harass Bender. Dude, um, this is freewheeling like we're Jazz Bender, brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, George, you're up here. I'm going to need you to take it down here. Look, okay, I'm sorry. The jacket's <laughs> off. We're cooking now. <laughs> you're the Unabomber. You're in your Morrissey shirt. I've acclimated to the space, to the temperature, to the we are humidity. We are slowly cooking our brands in here. It is a bit of a Hitler's final days type scenario. <laughs> it's a bit of a sauna. We, yeah. We do both have cyanide capsules ready. <laughs> um yeah so once they I was, come once they come to find us i was gonna say in the trend of famous handsome guys like paul newman he just loves racing cars yes so apparently that's been the majority of what he's been doing the past few years wow. but i always have thought like fastbender is such a good actor he definitely has a leading man appearance like why hasn't his career been bigger like has he chose was he up for some roles and maybe he got shafted and like those could have propelled him to the next level? Like, why is this guy not more of a household name? Here's my take on that. I think his face looks too stark and sinister so to his, be a nice leading man. His face does look want. severe. And when I was yeah. watching this movie, I'm like, he's in better shape than I've seen him, I think. Oh, like, yeah. he definitely worked out a lot for this, but his face looks thinner as well. Yes. And already... Gaunt. Some of some of uh, the intro sequence where he's in the WeWork space with the rifle looking at all the windows and stuff, that kind of reminded me when he's watching the couple having sex in their apartment, that kind of reminded me of the part in Shame where he's walking around, I think it's the meatpacking district, and he's looking up at the standard hotel and he's seeing the couple fuck against the glass. Right. And just like <laughs> the dead faced staring <laughs> kind of reminded me. I had a moment like that once. I saw a couple fucking against the glass. Yeah. Yeah. And man. you were just, you were shame staring. <laughs> <laughs> I was shame staring, man. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think I've ever seen a couple have sex in their window before. Well, one of these days. One of these days. You'll, yeah. You'll, well, I thought I would see that when I keep moved, your eyes peeled when I moved into my building, but everyone's so boring. Yeah. In building. <laughs> yeah. Cause you have a bit of a panopticon. I do. <laughs> going on a bit of a bit of a panopticon. Um, what was I going to say? This yeah, fast the, the pot opticon. Maybe you're right. Maybe his appearance is a bit too harsh. I think that's what it is. Because I, I think he is incredibly good looking, but he does look severe. He doesn't necessarily look the most approachable. He has a brutalist look. He does. <laughs> <laughs> he does. And speaking of appearance, I love Arthur Erickson design. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I loved his his main outfit in this like the tourist disguise oh yeah where in voiceover he's explained i modeled this appearance on a particular german tourist i saw because nobody wants anything to do with the german tourist <laughs> so it's like he's wearing this kind of 
floral shirt under like a beige jacket with a fedora sunglasses yeah beige pants (laughs) and it's the perfect mix of like obnoxious but also like you wouldn't even notice this person in a crowd that's a perfect description and it's it's so strategic innocuous uh, obnoxious and innocuous yeah (laughs) obnoxious Um, which I think I was reading Fincher when he was scouting locations, took a photo of a location and saw someone like that in the oh. picture. So from the sounds of this thing I hastily read before I came here, maybe this part wasn't in the comic. Maybe it was like Fincher adding this particular outfit. From the twisted mind of. From the twisted mind of the Finch. Finch. The Finch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you're... that's like, that's a good part of a Hitman movie. Like you need to have kind of an anonymous outfit yes you got to go you have to have an incognito Mm -hmm. outfit for sure so when i came here to do this podcast i'm like i have to dress like i'm going to blend into a crowd afterwards exactly and that's what i'm doing too. yeah obviously (laughs) Obviously, i'm blending in (laughs) well morrissey features heavily in the movie exactly so uh (laughs) he is obsessed with the smiths um there were maybe 12 smith songs that were played so throughout I, this movie i was gonna say they're like your fave right they or are one of yeah def- for me, if not my fave for me of. it's like i know a handful of songs i yeah. can't say i'm really a fan yeah what did you think of the specific tracks that were picked for this movie excellent tracks okay. um a lot of tracks that had a so the smiths obviously are sort of infamous or famous i guess for having tracks with uh sometimes a jaunty sort of mm. upbeat mood on the surface but, the but lyrics... lyrically uh they're dark so okay. uh, girlfriend in a coma was used mm. in this movie which is a very very famous use of this well and his girlfriend kind of was in a coma exactly or actually i guess it's kind of ambiguous whether or not he has a romantic relationship with that woman because she yeah. says like when I was getting tortured, I knew I knew if I died, I wouldn't ever see you again. And uh, they cut to Fassbender's stark, harsh face. And he I almost thought there was a flicker on his face. Like he felt pity for her, but maybe didn't return the feelings. And then at the end, it's like they're both on the beach chairs. But it's like, yeah, I, I kind of liked that it wasn't clear whether or not they're like a couple, whether it's that seems kind of like the one person he actually trusts. What else do you think? He really doesn't have any confidants in this movie, hence the need for voiceover. (laughs) Yeah, I think that's interesting. I I, I think they are. I don't know what else they would be, though. I mean, what do you think it would be? I mean, just just kind of analyzing it through like movie logic, it would kind of dictate that, yes, they are a couple. But I liked that it wasn't heavy handed. And it's kind of like, yes, maybe it is just the one person he trusts. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Um, What else was I going to say? Oh, also, we were talking about voiceover versus no voiceover. I was thinking during the opening scene of this movie, because we stay with Fassbender so long through the process of his first hit. Yes. Right. And we don't really know what's going on. We're kind of playing catch up at this point. I mean, we can deduce mm-hmm. that he's going to kill someone, but yeah. we don't really know who the target is, why he's going after them. And we just and, see. And we never really find that out. No, like, no. Like everything I, is very I like that it's left ambiguous. Yeah. But I was thinking of the movie, The Mechanic with Charles Bronson, where Bronson plays a hitman. And for the first, I want to say 10 or 15 minutes of the movie, there's no dialogue. And we're following him on this Mm. one job and he finally kills the person. And it kind of made me think, oh, if this movie didn't have any voiceover, it would be even more stark. Yes. And like, yeah, it definitely needs a voiceover for that kind of like snappy tone, a little injection of humor. I think so, because I think I think maybe I mean, I don't know if in the comics or in the graphic novel, he's obsessed with the Smiths. Um, Great question. (laughs) But but I think the the yeah, the idea of the whole mood of the Smiths being this there's this dark undercurrent, but on the surface being kind of even at times like jaunty or happy. Mm -hmm. Um, This movie kind of did that, too, where on the without voiceover, it would have been just this completely dark. (laughs) It would have been fucking grim without voice. So grim. Um, Almost even, you know, maybe even boring um, Mm -hmm. at points. Mm -hmm. But the voiceover, um, because it was played up for comedic purposes on so many occasions, um, really lightened this movie up. Um, and made it, I think, a lot more engaging. Yes, for sure. Um, like, uh, like the the scene that got, I think, 
got laughs throughout the theater where he's talking about how important it is to like stay fit as a hitman as he's like biting into a McDonald's breakfast sandwich. <laughs> so, okay, it's crazy because he's saying like, oh, McDonald's has so many locations. You can be anonymous. You pay in cash. So he goes, this is the part where I'm like, oh, this is my guy. I understand the mind of a McDonald's fiend. But then he takes the interior of his like, breakfast sandwich out of the bun yeah he, it's like, he wait, chopped what? and screwed that shit <laughs> which is crazy because i don't think we ever see him eating a real meal we see him eating like a banana while he's driving yeah, or like an sure. ensher like shake right because he never take yeah you're right um it's, it's I a guess... very practical approach to food he's not a foodie because here's what i'm thinking because i used to work at mcdonald's so i have yeah. some experience with this you can literally chop and screw your burger however you want at the till like you can mm. customize your shit um like as much as you want basically like you can add an extra patty you can add an extra bun you can right, add a middle right. bun you can you know you can do all sorts of stuff you can add a sauce remove a sauce um so he could have you know sort of customized his burger at the till but no he chooses to do that it would on attract his own. too much attention it would attract too much attention <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to the lay police, low the french police would be like Wait, there was a person shot in the same day. Somebody got a weird McDonald's order. <laughs> it's all connected. He got a, yeah, yeah. Like you know, he can't just ask for a McGangbang. He has no. to order the McDouble and the Junior separately, and then make the McGangbang himself. Exactly. Wait, what is the McGangbang again? So that's like a famous McDonald's like secret menu. Thing. Secret menu. Yeah, it's. I kinda, hate secret menu culture, dude. I kind of hate Fucking it too. I kind of hate it too. Knock it off. I, I, I knock know. it off. Yeah. Um. So it's. It's a McDouble and a junior chicken. Best value, I think, best burgers, mm. uh, pound for pound on right. the McDonald's menu, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, junior chicken's good. So good. I had one I yesterday. I love McDouble's, too. Yeah. And, um, so I think what you do is you just take off the bun. Anyway, yeah, you just basically combine those two together. Um, Dude, this is make me so hungry because all I had for breakfast was that rosemary rock salt bagel <laughs> on the walk over here. Let's uh, after this, let's go to a sandwich shop. I want to show you. Oh, that'd be good. I, I haven't taken you to Meat at O'Neill's, have I? No, I don't think so. Meat at O'Neill's and Lower Lawn <laughs> Cell. Best fucking sandwiches. Everybody go check them out. I'm talking to you. <laughs> I want you <laughs> for the U.S. Army. <laughs> Dude, this would be even more confusing if we had a multicam set up. Like, yeah. where would we look? Yes. I think just doing like three quarter towards you. No, we're not ready for sense. multi-cam. No, no, we're a single, we're a single cam show. We're, we're a single cam. We're cam. a 30 rock type show. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, I was going to say, so Fassbender apparently talked with his agent. He had just seen another very famous Hitman movie, The Samurai. Oh, yeah. Uh, Melville's movie. Le Samurai. With Elaine Delon, um, who also has one of the all time great Hitman fits with his raincoat, his mm -hmm, suit and the mm -hmm, hat. Mm -hmm perhaps the tip of the hat to the samurai yeah. but he had apparently said to his agent like i want to do something like this yeah. and then everything worked out with fincher hell yes and uh yeah fincher it sounds like was just as methodical as ever yeah in the filming of this like wanting to do many many takes and being very precise yeah uh what did you think of the appearance of this movie i thought it was fairly typical finch look where it very stark, almost chiaroscuro type lighting, right? Um, I think Fincher is pretty much known for um, I, having a very dim aesthetic. Yeah, I was going to say, I think the colors were kind of washed out. I don't think the contrast was as sharp as that, but I do get what you're saying. Yeah, there yeah. weren't a lot of bright pops of color. And I do like how this focus on kind of anonymous commercial spaces, like he's moving through airports, airport hotels, yeah. rental cars. Yeah. Like... The movie actually threw me for a bit of a loop when he goes to the Dominican Republic after his botched hit. Yeah. Because I thought, oh, are we about to do kind of a James Bond thing where it's like people are dying, but we're in all these sexy, exotic locales. But it's like, no, not at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still just as dark. Um, yeah, and just like. Yeah, it's like you can this... be anywhere. It's not going to feel you know uh nice and yeah it's like he's and, getting and... amazon packages he's turning in rental cars yeah i loved how often he would discard pieces of like now that this item has fulfilled its purpose it goes in the trash totally yeah totally. and and you as the audience i liked how sometimes you're like okay i get what he's gonna do with that thing yeah but sometimes they're like how is this going to come into play and then you're like yeah. oh so he's gaining access to the building 
posing as a recycling collector and then he's going to put the guy's body in the bin then he's going to chop it up and put it in the paint cans he got earlier <laughs> it almost i I, talk, I i said to you yesterday that this felt like because because there was a movie of the video game a movie version <laughs> of the video game hitman that i yeah. think like people forgot like truly after exist. it came out yeah um i think this is basically a, a movie version of that video game it felt very video gamey to me well, where he was like the pacing uh, of each chapter felt like a level of exactly, a video game where exactly. it's like in each chapter he has a clear objective yes in each chapter it's like we're gonna get this person next exactly yeah. um there's a clear objective um there's items as you said yeah <laughs> he has an inventory <laughs> dude when he goes to his storage locker in new orleans and it's full of like every type of gun yes. every type of passport every disguise i'm like oh man i i wish we'd almost seen more of this stuff in that locker yes i would love to have a locker like that <laughs> again i'm maybe it was traveling so much in the summer but i'm like i'm fascinated with the idea of fake passports uh -huh. like how do you make them uh -huh. yeah because it seems like it would be so hard now with all the scans it's not right. like the 1950s where you could just make a passport looking document and they're like picture of you must be your passport let's go right like take off the hat you're good um it, i mean in the 50s they probably weren't even making you take off your hat like i yeah. think it was so minimal whereas now it's like yeah they're scanning the passport it's bringing up a record of hopefully no outstanding warrants or crimes or whatever it's like yeah i bet it'll be much harder do you think i mean i think people do it still i think the people in vietnam that you contacted to like get you through the <laughs> through customs <Yeah. laughs> can probably help they, out with that i was gonna say i think vietnam visa pro could uh make me a vietnamese passport yeah they could pull some strings they could photoshop me <laughs> yeah dude at the airport they're like so you're a vietnamese national hmm <laughs> interesting <laughs> dude uh what was it oh yeah so i i think i was trying to explain this to you yesterday how i just felt like this was such a cozy movie and I know that's Which, a, I know it's a weird description. I think you're out of your mind because it's like <laughs> this is exactly the type of movie I love where it's like a procedural assassin movie, strict code, living in isolation. I didn't find it cozy. He see, has no human comfort. See, that's the thing that felt cozy <laughs> to me was all the just, environments are like stark and anonymous and he has no human relationships. I th I think it was cozy in the way of like we we see his inventory. We mm. were following his every move. We're seeing that these method, this methodical procedure of killing these people. I don't know. There's something about <laughs> the fucking twisted. Dude. I don't know. I don't know. If maybe, maybe some of our listeners can like relate to this or like explain this better than I am. But there's something about like, um, I don't know. There's something about this methodical procedural thing of like you're seeing every single step in the mm. uh, in how the sausage is made. There's I don't know. There's something cozy about that. I would me. say maybe cozy is not the right word, but it's, I would say I liked it, the it, it felt comfortable almost mm. watching it because it was such a it, it almost as you said, it sort of got into this. It was very cyclical, right? And it got into this routine. So it was, it was familiar, right? Um, mm every sort of chapter was how is he going to do this right so um, i would say what's he going to do with that thing and you see it happen you see it play out i don't agree with cozy or familiar i would say we frequently felt satisfaction as the audience once he accomplished each goal right. and once we saw how things kind of clicked together yeah for some of the uh well not heists for some of the hits yeah um I think maybe it was just the cyclical nature of it that made me yeah. feel cozy. And also, he keep, as we mentioned, he keeps repeating, uh, the killer keeps repeating certain codes of conduct to himself yeah. over voiceover, yeah. even as he kind of doesn't adhere to them a ton. Yeah. Um, I was going to say also the inclusion of Tilda Swinton made me think of the Jim Jarmusch movie, The Limits of Control, mm. which is borderline inscrutable. And we follow a hitman who is having conversations with different people before he finally goes to kill Bill Murray's character. Oh, shit. In some sort of like government facility. That sounds good. But it's like Tilda Swinton is one of his uh, contacts, I guess. And people are like giving him like matches and like little items and stuff uh -huh. in a way that like I don't think is ever explained to you as the audience. Okay. And that has no voiceover. Okay. But yeah, including Tilda Swinton, I'm like, oh, interesting. She's always so good. Oh, yeah. Like, she's so good, man. Yeah. She, yeah, everything about her is just so distinct. Totally. Um, totally. But I will say, as much as I enjoyed Tilda Swinton's character in this, 
getting to do sort of a monologue. Um, so she's one of the assassins that was sent to kill Fassbender after he botched the first job. Yeah. And Fassbender wasn't at the home in the Dominican Republic where they thought he would be. Yeah. So they end up beating and torturing, almost killing his presumably girlfriend. Yeah. His, um, his who, companion, his who, video who, game yeah. companion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, who's at the house. And then, yeah, Fassbender ends up torturing and killing his former employer finding the files that give information as to who these other hitmen were tracking them down going to kill the first guy in florida and then finding tilda swinton somewhere in like upstate new york i think yeah or just outside of new york city uh and then he kills her however i would say he really violates his kind of assassin's code of like no empathy don't improvise when he just goes bareface sits with her at a restaurant where they know her super well yeah and has her an extended well he's mostly being talked at then he leads her outside and kills her yes and i'm like that's very sloppy because everybody there has seen you yeah <laughs> and my sort of supposition as i your what? Uh, Sorry, your my, supposition. My supposition. My suppository. Okay, <laughs> I'll uh, I'll supposit it. My my watch was a bit of a suppository last <laughs> night, dude. That was yeah. You're pulp fixing yourself <laughs> for sure. Dude. This watch. <laughs> I was just saving it for my grandson or whatever, dude. Um, uh, my yeah, my supposition last night was that so Tilda Swinton tells a story, which I think is sort of the kind of the, the deeper layer of this move. It gets at the deeper layer of the story where um, why did, oh, my bad. Sorry, I'm uh, yeah, I was kicking say, your just wire. Be careful with the wire there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tread lightly. I'll tread lightly. <laughs> tread light, motherfucker. <laughs> Don't tread on me. <laughs> it's on site. Um, we're on site right now. Hey, hey, hey. Um, so she tells this story about, or this joke, actually. <laughs> this like, yeah, this like bar joke about, a hunter who keeps trying to kill this bear and trying to shoot this bear. And every time he misses and the bear um, gives him the option of like, I can either kill you or I can sodomize you. Yeah. And uh, he's getting butt fucked by the bear. He keeps getting butt. He's addicted to getting butt fucked by the bear. Um, and he keeps coming with like bigger guns, bigger guns. Um, and he keeps missing until the end of the joke, the punchline where the bear just goes like, y so you're not coming here to, like hunt. actually hunt yeah. are you <laughs> so the joke is that he's missing on purpose and tilda swinton sort of i think she actually literally asks the same question you asked like why mm. are you here right now like yeah. why why didn't you do this in a different way you could have done this <laughs> in a myriad of other ways yet you chose to come and meet me here um so she calls <laughs> him out on the exact same thing so i yeah. think this isn't a flaw of the movie i think this was intentional where um, I think he's almost trying to fail, right? And he and the whole um, sequence of events um, in this film follows the uh, him missing, right? So the initial hit, uh, he misses his yeah. target. Um, who is a, an older man in a penthouse who is with, I don't know, some woman. I couldn't tell if she... Like a dominatrix? Maybe, yeah. I'm like, wait, is she a dominatrix? Yeah. Anyway, because they end up like moving around from room to room. Fastbender thinks he has a clear shot and he actually ends up hitting the woman yeah. instead. Blood sprays all over the guy. Yeah. The bodyguards start swarming the apartment and he has to leave the vacant we work and blend into the night. This shit like the dominatrix. I'm in it and I can't get out. <laughs> I'm in it and I can't get out. <laughs> Bro, so so yeah. And mm. so I think we what we are meant to believe is that he's he, he he's almost lying to himself that he is this cold blooded, ruthless killer. And this is his life. And this is what he's right. going to be forever. In fact, it's starting to get to him and he wants out. Mm -hmm. And at, at the end of the movie, spoilers, he does get out. <laughs> he, he gets out. He's on the beach and he's withdrawn like almost $9 million <laughs> from his bank account. And it's a bit of an anticlimax because he does not kill his last hit. So I, I was also surprised that he doesn't kill. So he ends up confronting the customer who originally ordered the hit in Paris right. that Fastbender then botched. And then the agency that Fastbender works for says to the client, you can pay more for an insurance policy. We'll just take care of this guy who missed. Yes. So kind of a loose end. 
you know, this billionaire client says, yes, I would like that. Clean it all up. Apparently doesn't think anything more of it. Right. And then Fast Family shows up at his apartment and says, hey, do you and I have an issue? Like, if I leave, I better not have to come back. What's your problem, man? Yeah. <laughs> What's and your it's problem, like, dude? <laughs> it really surprises me that he wouldn't have just killed that guy. Well, I think because what the guy says at the end is like, oh, like, you know, like he didn't have any personal vendetta. He was just acting on like basically the guidance of the like the business advice, the business <laughs> advice of that guy. And so mm -hmm. I think he gets a sense of like, this guy doesn't know anything. He was just like he was way out of his wheelhouse um, right because the billionaire does say like i'm very new to like having this done so yeah. presumably some sort of business rival or something that he wanted yeah gone yeah and the manipulating a stock price maybe who knows and the, exactly and the guy who's all set up the hit was like well just kill fast yeah. vendors <laughs> you know clean it all up right the guy who gets got with the nail gun and it was basically a way to I don't know, just to make more money, I think, for him, right? Yeah. He's like, here's this extra oh, totally. job that we're going to do for you for the for the small fee of 150K or whatever. Yeah. Um. So he kind of didn't know what he was doing. He didn't have anything personal against Fassbender. He's probably not going to come back after him. So I think that's why Fassbender decides to to let him live. And I think he's on the out. He's on the out and out at that point, right? right? He's on his way out. He's got a foot out the door at that point. And uh, I, I, th I thought it was a... A fitting ending right because one of one of fastbender's codes that he keeps repeating is like think about like don't does isn't there something about like don't do it if there's nothing in it for you it's yeah something like that it's just a ruthless sort of yeah individualism no rugged empathy. individualism no empathy but i don't see here's the thing though it would have made more sense if he had killed that guy because ultimately unknowingly that billionaire was responsible for the torture of the woman that Fassbender cares about. So it's like, if he's going to kill the assassins who did it, why doesn't he just kill that billionaire as well? Well, was he though? I think what he realizes is that he wasn't really responsible. Although he technically paid for the hit, it was really the lawyer that sort of made it happen. Um, and it was, the I hit man, it was the hitman who, or uh, the hit people, I guess. Let's be inclusive <laughs> here. Uh, the who... HXT people. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. We're woke. That's right. That's right. Uh, the Zers that, uh, that end up, uh, yeah, like attacking his girlfriend. Um, I think he realizes this guy's not really implicated. And, mm. um, yeah. Right. And yeah. And I mean, and that it's not that deep, bro. Yeah. He realizes it's not that deep. Well, also, it kind of occurred to me watching this. It's like Fastbender's character it thinks he's smarter than he really is. Yeah. And, yeah. It seems like he's kind of gone insane basically his whole life having like nobody to talk to. Yes. So he like makes up this moral code and keeps repeating it to himself even as he's taking unnecessary risks. Exactly. And improvising, which apparently goes against this whole thing. Like don't improvise. Yeah, he but wants to... like you end up improvising the whole movie. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's basically fucking Grand Island theater sports out there, yeah. bro. It's, uh, <laughs> he's yes ending the he, entire shit. He needs a suggestion from the audience. <laughs> yeah, man. He's like Questlove in uh funk for uh, in uh, on the hot 97 dude he's just freestyling for like two hours <laughs> i haven't seen that <laughs> it's sick it's so sick that's like a particular hot 97 freestyle yes funk master flex yes uh, love goes on and just he, goes off he goes so hard for like a full hour just freestyling Whoa. holy shit <laughs> whereas can i bus can can't even hold down like five minutes of no freestyling. <laughs> he needs he needs his journal he's much less <laughs> ambitious that way yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure um yeah i'm just trying to think of other nitpicks i mean i guess at the beginning it doesn't really make sense that he'd be using the vacant we work space i still needs a key card to get into because it's like just because a retail tenant has left a space like there would still be other people coming in potentially to like show it to new tenants or whatever so yeah. how does he know that nobody's going to come in yeah especially when he believes somebody is about to enter and is going to shoot them. Then it's just a male person dropping off the mail. Yes, that's right. And even that, I would argue, doesn't maybe make sense because wouldn't there be a mailbox for the building down at ground level? Right. If there are different tenants. Uh, I don't know. Would it have to be delivered into the unit? Yeah. Maybe, maybe yeah. not. Yeah. But it's like we're meant to believe that he's confident using this space because nobody's going to come in. But it's like his cover almost gets blown. Yeah so yeah. i don't know yeah but i guess i can let that go and i guess the thing about 
it is like you, you can also always justify every mistake that perhaps the he makes or the filmmaker makes that might not be true to his character right with the twist that like oh he's doing he's fucking up on purpose well and at the <laughs> beginning he also says like from watching enough like true crime documentaries you learn that like there are a million ways you can make a mistake and like you might only think of like a dozen like ways to cover your tracks essentially yeah so he's yeah, he's trying to present himself as being very in control and very methodical, but he's kind of acknowledging as well that there are all these moving parts and unpredictable elements where yeah, yeah. things could go south. Yes. Like when the dog doesn't fall asleep for long enough. Why didn't he just kill the dog? I know. We talked about this. I, I think it's I because think, audiences are so cowardly. I think that it, it didn't test well with audiences. Dude, when people are like... I wish he only killed dogs in this When movie. people are like, <laughs> I, I can't even watch a movie if a dog dies. It's like, grow the fuck off. All right. Anyway, let's, let's cut to break and then yeah. we'll come back with more hot takes. So. Yeah, we need to we need to chill. <laughs> chill, chill, we chill. Need chill. To, like, cool ourselves off. <laughs> All right. So I think that pretty much does it for the killer. We would definitely recommend two thumbs up. Yes. I gave this four and a half on Letterboxd. Uh four and a half me too yeah i, yeah, I haven't uh, updated my letterbox yet but i do want to type up a little review i've really been slacking on the reviews yes. recently yes um i forget if i mentioned this i might have said to you before we started recording i've read a few interviews where the interviewers for fincher are kind of suggesting like this character might be somebody that fincher has commonalities with where it's like mm -hmm. very process oriented every detail accounted yeah. for yeah and do you think he secretly wants out i think he wants out of talking about fight club because he's <laughs> saying i haven't watched it in 20 years <laughs> and he said i'm also not responsible for like if incels or misogynists or crazy people get into it right which i completely agree with I can't imagine. You think people got radicalized by Fight Club in a big way? Oh, I. You know what? I've Cause often because it, it, it makes fun of that whole thing. Like it's but, all it's all done in irony. But right? George, I've often thought: a, the average person is pretty stupid. Yeah. B, casting Brad Pitt as the guy that you're not supposed to emulate. Yes. Like he's ah, too yes. sexy. You're right. You're right. Too sexy for my shirt, dude. <laughs> yeah. And there's also a scene in Fight Club that's always annoyed me when Brad Pitt is making fun of like an underwear ad on the yes. bus or the train the that Calvin they're taking. Klein underwear and it's like, ad. wait, your body looks exactly like this ad that you're making fun of. And ever since Fight Club came out, that's been one of the aspirational male bodies in film. So yeah. it's like, I feel like that point is almost lost. Uh -huh. it's almost Whereas moved. if it's like, if he didn't look like he could be a Calvin Klein underwear model, then it would have more validity. Yeah, that's a good point. A good point. <laughs> He's too sexy. I, I don't know what to say. Yeah, we all do want to be Brad Pitt, though. Yeah, <laughs> there is that angle to it. Yeah, if you cast Brad Pitt in any role, you just want to do that. It doesn't, yeah. It could be, he could be a vicious dog killer, dude. Yeah, literally in Audiences once, are gonna once be on one board. time in Hollywood, he killed his ex-wife. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, this guy rocks. So. <laughs> you're like, he's a cool guy. Well, I guess it's left ambiguous in the movie, but apparently the novelization that Tarantino wrote confirms that he did kill his ex. Oh, okay. Right on. Right, because people in the movie were always debating, like, oh, did you hear like Cliff killed yes. his whatever? Right. Um And he wasn't he wasn't a real was he a real like life person that existed, or was he the, just No, the I think fictional? it's all fictional. Okay, okay. Um I just want to read you one thing. Uh, Fincher is especially full of praise for Tilda Swinton, who is a challenge, who has a challenging looking nighttime scene in the snow. Oh, he sighs. We've shot probably 26 takes of that. It was really complicated, but she's so game. It was probably 15 degrees below zero. Her pockets were filled with those little warming things. She was like the Michelin woman. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, the Michelin woman, you know, like the Michelin man, like the Michelin like man bundled up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, what do you mean? I thought there was I... lore that there was a, he had a wife, the Michelin man had a no, wife no. and kids and a family. No. <laughs> I'm like a challenging looking nighttime scene. They were briefly outside. That didn't look challenging. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I just maybe... take it for granted how easy it is to film. So totally. I'm like, yeah, maybe that was... didn't look logistically very challenging. Well, me and you are like, it's fucking easy to write a Netflix movie. And we're yeah. about to do that after this, I think. We're confident we're going to be able to green screen something in here in post. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there may or may <laughs> not be like a backdrop yeah. here right now. <laughs> um, And also, I did like, 
you know, Tilda Swinton, as soon as she's like ordering all the whiskeys, I'm like, this is to make her look like she's going to be too sloppy so she can still try to kill him. Yes. I, Dude, I, she almost Tinder swindled him. Well, <laughs> Tilda yeah, swindled Because when she <laughs> slips, or so it looks, on the stairs, and yeah. then she says, help me up, I'm thinking, like, do not help her. It's yes. a trap. And then he shoots her in the head. And he knew And that. then when she slumps on the ground, you see a knife has been drawn, like a dagger in one of her hands. Yes. I'm like, I fucking knew it, dude. Yes, yes, you can't course. trust anyone. Hell no. Because no. <laughs> I think he, I, he, there was a brief hint that she pulled something out of her jacket. Um, yeah, like we could almost see. Well, it I think audience. she was using the slipping to yeah. kind of disguise the retrieving of that from her purse or yes. whatever. So. And, and I think if you watch carefully, you can actually see her. If you something out. when I watch it at home later, I'll do yeah. like a frame by frame <laughs> analysis of that. Like the Zap Raider film. Yeah. Did I ever tell you about doing a frame by frame analysis of a scene in the movie? It comes at night. <laughs> no have you seen that movie yeah that was my uh, hottest take about movies i have is that there was a monster in it comes at night right because right right. i mean i think that's most that's a kind of infuriating movie because there's literally zero like way you could you you could argue for both sides with equal amount of evidence (laughs) okay so there's a scene early in the movie when they leave kind of the compound to drive into the woods and if you pause and you highlight it you can't tell if it's like a crazy stump, like forest structure, uh-huh. or if there's something back there. I've always thought there was something back there. Okay. And everybody I watch the movie with is like, you've lost your damn minds. Okay. I'm like, no, there is a monster. It's coming. It's coming at night. At night. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's that's it for the killer. What I, the last thing I wanted to say about it, what I really liked is their use of diagenic and non-diagenic sound where like when you're in his where you're sort of seeing a first person mm. pov you're hearing the smith songs like full blast whereas sometimes and then the camera will like go third person pov and you're just watching him listen to it on his headphones yeah it was really really cool um, yes <laughs> i like how they did how they would sometimes go i guess subjective and objective mm-hmm. um and the they would play with the the way that we hear the song um as well yeah so I one thing i cool. want to pause on as well when i watch it at home later when he first pulls out like he has an an ipod with wired headphones yes he has a bunch like a of Zoom. playlists though <laughs> like yes. he clicked on work playlist which yes. is all morrissey but i want to see like wait what were the other playlist titles i think I they're really all catch it. probably morrissey right <laughs> well I'm maybe di- maybe different selections different cuts i bet it's all the smiths and yeah. like morrissey single stuff absolutely but i feel like there must have been one that said like exercise or workout or something yeah 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 but yeah, yeah. it's like wait he had like a full screen of playlists yeah what were those yeah did he have a bone playlist yeah sexy time playlist yeah just morrissey <laughs> wait isn't morrissey celibate or hasn't he been celibate for a long time it was rumored that he was rumored. Okay. um but i no confirmed cases of him busting <laughs> <laughs> yeah no nothing no kill confirmed but huh. but i think he sort of denied that i don't know he likes to keep wait is he gay not gay unknown also unknown okay yeah. he likes to keep it's all, ambiguous all that stuff very very right. ambiguous i think it's heavily hinted um that he is gay or has had some sort of uh male close encounters like relationship or something okay yeah huh. in, a, in a steam room one time right <laughs> he's like by the way can i cut your hair how much did you pay for that <laughs> <laughs> damn dude yeah so uh, there's a song called william it was really nothing mm. where i forget who it was uh because i i, I pe- fans have speculated that it's referencing i think a guy from another band i forget okay who but some dude from another like band or another singer um who uh he had like a sexual encounter hmm. with um so I feel like you spent a long time decoding lyrics yes. from Morris, as a lot of people have. That's very common because um, there is so much to read into because a lot of the lyrics are so kind of mysterious and mm. secretive. Right. <laughs> uh, but uh, as I told was telling you before we started recording, Morrissey has uh, now kind of like denounced a lot of his early right. stuff with the Smiths. Um, I can't wait until I start a podcast about Tubi and denounce every episode of this. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> I retroactively go back and change all the episode descriptions to give myself a different name. Yes, you 1984 that shit. Yeah. yeah. 
Alan, an Alan Smithy podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you were talking in the break how I need to tell my story about getting banned from the Red Scare pod. You got it. Subreddit. Yeah, come on. Yeah. You got it. First tell of us. all, if you're a moderator of that, fuck you. You're a fucking herb. <laughs> That's right. So, this is why we started doing video pods, yeah, just so you could do that. Just so I could send a not so coded message. So, how do I? Should we put like a cave here, like an ISIS video? <laughs> just like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, we should put a picture of this guy's fucking horrifying face behind <laughs> us. No. How do I even explain this? Because you've never listened to Red Scare, right? Like, no. you don't know. I have no idea. Do you know it's hosted by two women? No, I do You would never listen to a woman podcast. Of course <laughs> <laughs> Even if it was, like, the most idiotic, reactionary, right-wing stuff. Anyway, so one of the hosts of the podcast is named Dasha Nekrasova. Uh-huh. She Russian? Yes. She's a Dr- Ruski? She plays, director. She's of... on the Counter-Strike? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Uh, actually, they're both of Russian descent. And uh, anyway, so hence Dude, the title, what? Red Scare. Oh, so okay. anyway, this is Russians love hot takes. Yeah. Oh, they're they're addicted. Okay. So anyway, um, there's a person who kept posting on the Red Scare subreddit under. Di- so the original account name was Mary Shelley Step on Me, okay. like the author of Frankenstein. And then his whole bit was like posting photos of Dasha from like her old Tumblr or like her Instagram or whatever, and just putting so many different emojis, like heart eyes and stuff. Uh-huh. And the post being like, how does she do it? And just pictures of this woman okay. who is like, I think she's good looking. I wouldn't say she's like conventionally a beautiful woman, uh-huh. but like, I would say, I don't know if this is offense, but not say, I'm just going to say it. the kind of woman that like women and gay guys think is very hot. But like, if you're a straight man, you'd be like, eh. Interesting. I'm very curious. Okay, I'll I show feel, you some pictures afterwards. I feel like I don't have a visual, but okay. Um, yet. Anyway, so this say. guy is just like obsessed with her and would like post photos of her every single day. Okay. And then people would be like, "So you want to fuck her? Like you're horny for her?" And he'd be like, "No, I just think she's beautiful and I love the podcast." And it's like, wait, <laughs> this is very weird. And then he would like have meltdowns every so often and come back with a different account. But it was like clearly him. Okay. And you could tell there were like, I'm like the guy in Zodiac decoding the ciphers. Like I can instantly tell if it's this guy commenting from like the annoying ticks and kind of mannerisms <laughs> in the language. Okay. So I'm like building a case file and I'm like, I keep blocking this guy's different accounts and he keeps coming back. And I'm like, oh my God, like fine. If somebody's annoying, I'll just block them and never think with them again. But if you're making me block you time and time again, it's like, I'm going to fucking engage with you. Uh-huh. And uh, so I guess the apex of this guy's narrative is that he went to an event somewhere in New York, I believe, where Dasha was like speaking or giving some sort of presentation. Right. And he took a photo with her. And I showed you this guy's <laughs> face, right? Oh, yes. He, okay, okay, yes. The way I feel looking at this face is like when the diner monster in Twin Peaks is revealed. <laughs> I bet, and I'm not going to show this guy's face because maybe it's a bit too mean, even though he posted it himself. I think he, like, regrets posting his face as well because okay. people were mean to him. I was mean to him. Um, <laughs> but it's just, like, if I if I were to show this picture on the green screen, no context, anybody who's seen a true crime documentary would be like, that boy ain't right. Okay. okay. <laughs> he has a very off-putting appearance. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And I do remember somebody saying, you look just as weird as I expected, but in a totally different way than I expected. <laughs> which is in an so, even, <laughs> which is so fucking funny. You look weird, but in a weird way. <laughs> anyway, so it goes on. I keep blocking him, and then I like I don't know. Whenever the the topic of this guy comes up in a thread, maybe I make a few like witty comments like saying that he's a creep basically sure sure and people start to like it drop a few bars and then there was some thread where he was commenting and i forget even what it was and i don't know why i was so mean i think i'd probably had a couple drinks but <laughs> he said something like oh like i'm better than you to somebody and i'm like you're a grotesque little freak we all know what you look like don't act like you're better than anybody <laughs> holy shit people like my comment you I lit him up, nothing of it. You lit him I up. log on the next morning. He's screenshotted that, <laughs> made it a post, said, why are people so mean to me on here? What? And I will say, my... You ethered him, bro. I ethered him, and he had, like, meltdown posts for days, and then came back on new accounts, obviously. Oh but he, like, fully logged off of 
Reddit for like five days straight. I think it's like the longest unbroken posting period since he's become sexually fixated on this woman. Holy shit. You dismantled this guy with your words. So I, I think it's the say, use of grotesque was yeah, a little much. Like imagine if somebody called you a grotesque. You know what? I said, you're a grotesque little freak. You have dead eyes and we all know what you look like. Don't act better than anyone on here. Oh my God, man. Oh. So, okay. Good thing we got a smoke detector now, in here. That's all I'm going to say. Did I feel bad? No, not really. Okay. Now, you're, I did, you're like the kill. You're like fast vendor. I did have the thought. This person seems unstable. And if they kill themselves yes. and print this out and it's found in their little basement suite, I don't want to be involved. He's definitely printed this out, this screenshot out, like from a library printer yeah. okay but <laughs> this guy's a, li- a public library so this guy does sure. the same bit on twitter yeah. he posts every single day on twitter oh, if okay. not multiple times a day and does it on reddit okay so i went to his tw- twitter and i saw just uninterrupted never breaks character never breaks the bit from of reddit on the road <laughs> on reddit he was having meltdown oh my god yeah oh, okay 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 and then uh eh, we might have exchanged some words in another thread and he yeah. kind of went he went way back my comment and post history and like found some piece of information that he was trying to use against me. But it's like, what? I beat him to the punch, man. Grotesque little freak. That's hard to rebound from. It's so hard, man. And I would say overall, the reception to his posting has been very much skewed towards positive. And a uh-huh. lot of people give him, it's almost like a make a wish situation. Uh-huh. It's like, wait, are people actually enjoying this? Because he gets so much positive reinforcement. But he does have the type of psyche where as soon as he gets pushed back, he spirals. Uh-huh. And that's what he dwells on. Okay. So it's like he can have 99 people gas him up. But if I call him a grotesque old freak. <laughs> anyway, maybe this makes me come across as a cyber bully. I will say this is one of the most annoying people I've ever encountered online. And it's like I blocked him literally 10 times before I started engaging. And I've like backed off. I'm like, okay, I, I did what I set out to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this person has resumed their normal behavior. It's very odd because whenever people are like, oh, do you want to date her? Do you want to fuck her? Like, what's all this stuff? He's like, he gets almost mad at people for suggesting that. Wow. So it's like, I would say this person claims to not be autistic. They claim to be straight. They uh-huh. claim to not want to fuck this person whose photo they post every day and say how beautiful she is. That's odd, right? Right. You know, that's very odd. It's very odd. So <laughs> that's he, unusual behavior. You think he has a like a parasocial sort of relationship <laughs> with uh, this this girl so, from this pod? Like, yes. Do you think that's what it and is? And I do want to know more of the uh, Mary Shelley stuff on me lore because it's like that's his name. This, right? yeah, M S S O M. Okay, for sure. Like, where does he live? Is he in school? Is he employed? Does he have friends? Mary He's even made a couple comments like, I have a wife. And it's like, no, you fucking don't. <laughs> that's that's when it almost that's when it almost made me wonder, is this a character? Yeah. Because yeah, Mel- Mary that, Shelley stuff on me is like a troll type name too, right? It's like the kind of letterbox performative horniness where it's like, oh, this actress is so hot. Yes. Step on me. Where it's like you're expressing a vile level of horniness but in a submissive non-threatening way so it's almost like comedic exactly holy shit dude. wait anyway, so you got banned for this so i didn't get banned for my initial comment but the next day or in the next couple of days i was responding to somebody in a thread where this was being discussed uh-huh. and somebody was like oh somebody sent a really mean dm to this to mary shelley step on me and i commented like lol it wasn't a dm it was just a comment and the person's like oh i didn't realize i couldn't tell from the screenshot and then i got banned oh and i'm like wait what huh <laughs> yeah weird okay and then so now you can't post on that well are you still I was or were to... you reinstated no no so I, I can't post i can still lurk yes and i think i can still upvote and downvote uh-huh. and i still downvote his threads <laughs> when he creates them because he's a fucking bitch um <laughs> I think I have a nemesis here. I don't know what it is about this guy that bothers me so much. Wow. Man. I think he's just a creep. Like, I yeah. think he's a real freak. Yeah. And I think, I think, I, look, I think one day Hunter Biden, Mary Shelley, Steph on me, all of their actions will come to light yes. and people will regret being like, ah, it's so funny. Yes. I think there's some sinister stuff here. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> but then, okay. So there's a, there, 
there's been a balkanization of the Red Scare Reddit universe where the original sub was closed down for a day. It was made private. And then these other backup subs became more active and then people splintered. So not everyone's on the original sub anymore. Right. So it has over like 100K subscribers, but now I'm on... So it's been a diaspora. Now I'm on RS Pod, uh -huh. which I think has a much better user base and it's much smaller at the moment. Yeah, and that guy hasn't made it on to... He's the... posted sometimes on RS Pod. Uh -huh. I think he started a couple threads about me on there, but he's mostly flipped back to Red Scare Pod. Whoa. And maybe, maybe he, he must have seen my comments about being banned from there as well. So perhaps he knows that he can post there unfettered but see i don't know man talking about all this stuff i want to light them up again <laughs> the media the media romanticized rap beefs i yeah. think they should romanticize reddit beefs more. <laughs> beefs between total strangers <laughs> yes yes yeah. no i i think i'm good i i said what i had to say but why do i feel like there's gonna be a do <laughs> you're gonna be part of like a documentary <laughs> that's gonna be made about that this, this guy is gonna be in police years. evidence yeah, yeah for sure but here's the thing i think if you want to become a prominent power poster of a community there are going to be a spectrum of responses right and if you're going to continually create accounts once getting blocked or banned and do the same thing over and over again some people are going to find that very annoying and some people from that group are going to be vocal about it as well. Yes. So, yes. you know, same rules apply. Like if I were doing a bit every single day and people gave me negative feedback, mm -hmm. that is entirely fair. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I just want to clarify because I feel like I came across as very mean here. I don't want anything bad to happen to this person. Right. I just want them to stop doing these fucking annoying posts. <laughs> Maybe just go to Twitter. Like the idea that you need to do this on multiple platforms. Mm -hmm. This is a fucking freak that we're dealing with. Right. You contain yourself. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. It's it's very unusual. Wow. But yeah, that's the story of me versus Mary Shelley stuff on me. You versus <laughs> the people. <laughs> yeah, truly. Well, some of the people were on my side. Some of them were like, oh, that guy was just being a cunt. Like, we love you. Don't worry about him. Right. So these are the rival factions. Yeah. This is the Lenin v. Stalin. Yeah. Sort of uh, splintering of the Communist Party of, of the Red yeah. of the Red Scare. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, find me on RS Pod. Right. And then I, I did create a thread on RS Pod being like, when me and Mary Shelley step on me, finally meet. And it was you're gonna De Niro step on him, and dude. Pacino finally sitting down in heat. <laughs> you're gonna step on him. Yeah. And He's stepping so, to you. And then someone so I think someone commented on my thread being like, This reminds me of how homoerotic your obsession is. And I'm like, it's not gay to have a nemesis, but women think it is. <laughs> dude, I had no idea that you were so active on these on on these subs, man. <laughs> yeah. I will say I think most of my activity is probably just in podcast subreddits more so podcast subreddits where it's like we actually talk about the podcast okay because i would say like the fighter and the kid is an example of a podcast community where it's like purely disliking the content that comes yes. out of it red scare subreddits are most people are pretty dismissive of the content and just use it as like a forum to say whatever okay so it's like and what kind of topics like is it sort oh of just a... like movies uh -huh. art uh -huh. a lot of complaining about like zoomers are so dumb a lot of complaining when it's discovered that the op is a zoomer uh -huh. a lot of like one of the bad things about the original red scare pod uh subreddits is that so many people just treat it as like their diary and they're like oh i'm 28 and i've never had a date and my life is terrible should i go to therapy i don't think it's gonna help okay it's just very like self-defeating stuff like that interesting yeah i'm still trying to get a handle on like what this podcast is they just they just shoot the shit like there's no well particular... i was gonna say i mean i would listen to an episode if you want to like get the gist of it uh -huh. i mean i listened to bid in 2018 uh -huh. uh but this podcast originally rose to prominence when dasha was at the time engaged to one of the hosts of come down so oh. it was kind of like in the same gotcha the same quote thing. unquote universe ah, okay. but i would say it has become very in the bodily different. fluids verse <laughs> yeah <laughs> the cum verse anyway i don't think dasha should have cheated on my close personal friend adam friedland but you know oh, that's shit. neither here nor there okay. <laughs> <Awesome. laughs> it sounds like a post you've been drafting for uh for a while oh dude i i have so many posts i've been drafting i'm like nah i'm just not gonna 
not gonna release these. You have a storage locker like Fastbender. <laughs> yeah. Full of, uh, drafts full of, of, full uh, of guns and half half typed up posts. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, man. So that's that's the drama. Uh I wonder what if can I'm I gonna, say I'm floored, man. I wonder <laughs> if I'm gonna regret saying any of this. <laughs> Look, okay, here's my coda. Here's my closer. I, that's the mean, that's maybe the only time I've ever been like really mean someone online. Okay. But I do think this person deserved it and made themselves the center of attention in such a way that, yeah, it's going to polarize people. I like how that was like a precision strike that yes. you enacted. You were <laughs> yes. the precision of a killer. Yeah. <laughs> I hit, I hit that. that was a hit you put I out. was waiting in the WeWork to post. You, you put a hit on, on Mary Shelley's step on me. Yeah, I did. Yeah. But anyway, I want to say they're alive and well and okay. that they're yeah, obsessively yeah, posting about hit. this yes, woman yes, yes, every yes, single yes. day. Yes. Um, yeah, I can't wait for the Netflix original when uh, his crimes are brought to light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, yeah, it'll, yeah, it'll all come to light one day. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'm trying to think, do I have any other nemesis? Not really. You like Nemesis Coffee. I do like Nemesis Coffee. Yeah. That's true. I was there the other day. They do a, a mean flat white. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should go there today. Yeah, get some coffee after this. What time is it? Might be nice. 1 p.m. Oh, perfect. Yeah, because we got to be out of here in an hour. Mm -hmm. Out of the bunker. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> a general needs it to plan an invasion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the the u.s army got this next yeah. <laughs> biden uh, biden yeah. needs this to to figure to to meet with the this is the situation yeah. room actually this is where they need to contain biden's dog which is bit there have been like a dozen different biting incidents from commander the german shepherd yeah so the dog's been booted from the white house i've I heard think. this yeah i've heard this yeah because he won't train her that's the yeah thing. that's what i've heard well everything biden touches uh you know we don't have to get into his daughter's diary and mm -hmm. Project Veritas and all that. <laughs> that. We'll save that for another episode. Yeah, yeah. However, if you, the listeners, want to hear my theories about the contentious diary, DM me. Good. <laughs> Good. I'll add you to my Telegram channel. And uh, yeah, and I'll, I'll vote you on Reddit. <laughs> yeah, I'll vote you on Reddit. <laughs> on on yeah. Red Scale, on RS yeah. Pod. <laughs> Do not amplify Mary Shelley's step on me posts. This yeah. is a dangerous, sick man. <laughs> do not engage. Yeah, do not engage. I'm qualified, but you guys don't go and engage. Yes. <laughs> I was like, forged in the fires. You're like a hostage uh, negotiator, or uh, no, like a ho like a, one of those people who talks people down from oh, the ledge. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do they call those people? Like, um... well, wait. If someone's just trying to commit suicide, they might get the hostage negotiator, yeah. like the trained person. Yes, yes, yes. Where okay. you try to talk people out. Right, right, right. Maybe yeah. that, that is an apt um, comparison. Yeah, I know what you mean, though. It's like the specialized. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, do we have any other media discussions? Uh, what did I start? Oh, I started uh, the new season of Selling Sunset last night. <laughs> How's that one going? <laughs> Pretty good, man. Pretty good. Um, that's always a it's always a good right, a good right. time. Yeah. Well, I it's told literally you literally the stark contrast to the killer, which we watched last night. Right. I, um, where it's nothing about the process. Where there is no dimness whatsoever. It's <laughs> it's always it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Right. On that show. Well, I tried watching the pilot, but I couldn't get into it because there wasn't enough about the actual real estate. I know. I'm like, I need more mechanics. And this is why I, I kind of prefer Million Dollar Listing New oh, York. Oh, it's is, so much better. Is, yeah. is actually my preference. But I don't think they put out New York at a season of New York for a while. I think since True. COVID. Um, so this has been my real estate. I do like to have one ongoing like re real estate reality TV yeah. program going <laughs> at any given time. So um, yeah, it's hitting that spot. Scratching that itch. People are fascinated by the uh, the logistics and the inner workings of it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what about you? Oh, I finished the second season of the summer. I turned pretty. Yes. I'll. We gotta get out of here quickly, so I'll keep it short. Nothing in the second season needed to happen or <laughs> built on the narrative of the first season at all. I said, it's, sounds like the Kissing Booth sequels. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, so I found out the Kissing Booth came out after the books. Of the summer i turned pretty even though the kissing booth beat pretty to the screen uh -huh. however there is some stuff in the second season where it feels very kissing booth-esque uh -huh. with like playing games and like 
cheesiness and right you were saying there's an arcade in the mix and go-karting and yeah. stuff and uh, uh, not mario karting just go-karting and ddr yeah also holy shit i've never heard, i don't think i've ever heard taylor swift in a soundtrack until this show mm -hmm. they use as much t swift as this movie used morrissey holy shit there is not a song where they didn't want to drop the bag wow to yeah. get the rights but um, there's also some Lana Del Rey as well, oh, which nice. I rarely hear in a soundtrack. Nice, yeah. There's one episode where she, I her swear songs they make great movie oh, songs. Totally, like she makes songs basically for movies. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, there are a few episodes where it's like so needle drop esque. It feels like you're watching The Wolf of Wall Street. It's just like yeah. one song into another into another. Oh, sure. But yeah, it it sucks. I'll be watching season three. I gotta see it out. <laughs> yeah, you gotta see it through. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> see how this plays out. But yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Um, well, I think uh, we can wrap it up. Yeah, we for can wrap it up. First video pod. Stay, I hope you guys liked it. Stay tuned for the future. I can't promise we'll do video every week, but we'll try to do it maybe a couple times a month. Uh, we might try recording in my apartment too. Yeah. So. So. All right. Bye. Whoa. Oh, whoa, up, dude. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then bye. Bye.